Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Gilead's effort on the HIV front. And also, I'd once again offer a big thanks to our uh, Patreons, Inf, uh, Jason and Howard, and uh, a new Patreon, uh, Ilya. Uh, thanks for supporting the initiative on uh, reporting HIV uh, updates, and uh, this really helps the channel. Um, I'm still waiting for Indian Patreons to join for the Hindi version, uh, but at this point of time, I've already created a separate channel for them, and soon we'll have only English in this channel, and we'll have Hindi separately in a different channel. So that's the st uh, that's the streamlining that I have done. Progressively, we'll keep on refining uh, the contents and uh, make this a better channel for everyone. So having said that, I would like to get um, uh, get started with the core of this um, video, that is Gilead's efforts on HIV and what are the therapies they have got and what are the issues that we should be aware of. So let's get started. <music> Welcome back, friends. Uh, Gilead Sciences, Inc., uh, NASDAQ ticker symbol GILD, announced the result of four uh, collaborative studies at the Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections. Uh, the short form of that is CROI. So it was CROI 2023 in Seattle. And these studies evaluated novel investigation, uh, investigational combinations and strategies with the potential to target the HIV viral reservoir or enhance immune response to maintain virologic control in the absence of antiretroviral therapy. Friends, you would know that Gilead is already uh, a maker of a lot of ART, uh, which is very popular and uh, very successful over the decades. And so they have a formidable understanding of this topic. And this is really a good uh, development that they are trying to uh, create therapies which would uh, necessity, uh, which would uh, remove the necessity of using ART. The HIV cure research program includes three studies that evaluated strategies to maintain virologic control in the absence of ART in humans. And there was one which was done on simians. So we'll talk about the humans first and then the simians. The phase 2A Titan trial evaluated dual treatment with two broadly neutralizing HIV antibodies. We call broadly neutralizing uh, HIV antibodies as BNABs. So the BNABs in question here are 3BNC117 and 10-1074 and showed that this led to a, a significant delay in viral rebound. Uh, in a phase one of two proof of concept study conducted by the University of California, San Francisco, uh, they tried a combination therapy consisting of a vaccine which was called AGS004 and an immune mo modulator called as Vorinostat uh, along with BNABs that I mentioned before, 10-1074 and VRC07-523LS. Uh, and it provided evidence of potential virological control. And there was a separate ALIX-003 phase 2 trial which showed that a combination of a vaccine, HTI, and an immune modulator, GS9620, induced a, a strong T-cell response. And I've already spoken about this in the ALIX uh, video earlier. So these were some of the positive news that we got from uh, CROI 2023. The fourth uh, preclinical study from Gilead was conducted in collaboration with Gridstone Bio Inc. and the Simian Immunodeficiency Virus or SIV, uh, CHAD and SAM RNA vaccines uh, in combination with immune modulators introduced a so strong uh, immune response in a macaw model. So basically in a simian model they have found the combination uh, of uh, CHAD and uh, SAM RNA vaccine uh, to be effective. So the next step would be to get permission to try this in the humans. So they will have to show uh, the results and the uh, strategy to FDA and convince FDA that they are ready for uh, inhuman trial. And then the first uh, step of that would be uh, safety uh, with low dose. And then the second step would be safety and efficacy where they will be increasing the dosage and they will also be looking at the uh, efficacy. So there is place to go in that one. Gilead's HIV research and development efforts aim to cure HIV. The company has a comprehensive cure research and development program that is advancing with speed and conviction. As Gilead progresses further with uh, testing investigational curative regimens, 
the company's uh, partnership and collaborations are more important than ever uh, in this complex effort. Uh, Gilead aims to ensure its research and development efforts contribute to the entire scientific community's uh, search for a cure. And Gilead's work to develop a cure for HIV is one part of the community's uh, one part of the company's uh, larger role uh, in the global efforts to end HIV epidemic, and part of its focus on person-centric innovations. So, but before we get all giddy and pop the champagne, uh, there are some disturbing reports that we need to keep in mind in order to manage our expectations. Because anyone uh, that I have met uh, who is asking for details on HIV therapy wants the therapy as of yesterday. So. The, the disappointment factor is very, very significant. So as a part of a psychological effort, we need to make sure that anyone comes to the channel is able to manage their expectations. So I'm going to provide some of the uh, negative information that is out there just so that you can manage your expectations. Continuing a trend set by the AIDS Healthcare Foundation in the United States, its European counterpart is increasing pressure on Gilead Sciences and its AIDS or HIV and Hepatitis C uh, drug policies in Europe. Uh, AHF Europe is urging Gilead Sciences to put lives before profits and stop its greedy tactics and is staging a protest this month outside Gilead's offices in Amsterdam. So this is the news that I'm reporting to you. It's not my opinion. Uh, I think uh, from an investment perspective, I always like uh, Gilead stock. But this is what the activists are saying. And Gilead Sciences uh, leading HIV or AIDS treatment are Bictarvi, uh, Truvada, and Descovi, which collectively generate substantial sales each year. The U.S. pharmaceutical company, uh, Gilead, also offers uh, several uh, hepatitis C drugs, including uh, Harvoni and uh, Epclusa. When these uh, drugs were introduced and first launched almost a decade ago, they generated uh, tens of billions of dollars in revenue and profits, primarily in the United States and Europe. However, AHF, uh, AHF Europe is now calling on Gilead to allow uh, generic products uh, uh, to be created for Harvoni in all low and middle income countries uh, without exception. The group is also demanding that Gilead stop uh, evergreening uh, patents on existing HIV or AIDS drugs uh, like uh, Truvada, arguing that this is exploitation, not innovation. And friends, you would recollect that earlier, way earlier in our um, channel, I had done a video on how uh, a pharmaceutical company uh, may uh, may not release all the uses of its uh, therapy uh, at once, but uh, when the pattern comes to an end, at that time they'll uh, introduce a new use for the therapy or the, the medicine and uh, extend the pattern. So this is common practice for many, uh, many uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, it's a regular trend in the industry. And the problem with that is that as long as there's a patent that is active, uh, generic drugs cannot be made. And if generic drugs cannot be made, you don't get cheap versions. And there's a plus and minus to this whole thing, and we need to understand this. As long as uh, you have the patent out there, the company which is producing it, which has put research and development to create the intellectual property in the first place, went through all the FDA cycles and everything and bought it to market, is hoping to recover all the costs plus profits to reward its shareholders. And that is the reason why we have that patent regime. And once the patent is over, the generic companies are able to produce it for cheap because they didn't do any research and development in the first place. They take the formulation and they recreate it and then they package and they sell it. That's why generics are cheaper. But when the generics come into market and uh, the company that created the uh, product in the first place, the, the therapy in the first place, uh, starts losing uh, revenue, uh, to uh, all these uh, other generic companies, then it slowly drops that uh, uh, therapy and moves on to uh, researching new therapies. That's why you see all these big pharma investing in new therapies and continuing to have a pipeline and making it because they want original stuff and they come up with original intellectual property. But there's a whole lot of uh, uh, generic companies. I'm not saying generic companies are bad. They perform a very important function. But just like uh, uh, you can say that pharmaceutical companies have got greed for expanding the patent, the problem is that once the patent is gone, 
and the generic companies uh, um, bring down the price for uh, the therapy, there is no motivation for the generic company to continue producing the therapy. And the parent company which originally produced the therapy has moved on to new therapies and it's working on those patents where it is more remunerative. As a result, patients who depend on a generic uh, uh, medicine uh, that is maybe 15 or 20 years old, they are most likely to face shortages of those medicine because most of the generic companies have uh, um, shot down the price so low that uh, many generic companies have moved out of that product and gone into some other product where the margins are still there because generic companies uh, operate on razor thin margins. So this is a problem for the industry. Maybe uh, governments should intervene or the industry should get together and uh, work along with patient advocates to see how uh, they can bring a balance so that there is still greed there for innovation and there is still return to shareholders so that they can fund the innovation. And at the same time, uh, generic companies can also survive so that lesser uh, uh, people with lesser uh, income uh, and who are not able to afford the expensive uh, therapies can continue to get cheaper versions of the drug. So there needs to be some work out there. I'm thinking about these things and I'll bring more videos to you on those topics at a later date. And friends, I would request that you uh, put your comments here and let me know what you think about this. And also, if you like this video, please press a like out there uh, so that uh, this video is uh, taken by YouTube algorithm and presented to more people like yourself and they can discover our wonderful channel. And also, if you are among the 42 or 52% of uh, people who visit our uh, uh, channel and watch our videos but have not yet subscribed, I would request you to please subscribe because it's absolutely free and it will help this channel grow and bring you more good videos and thought-provoking videos uh, in the field of disease and uh, therapies. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.